Hi everyone and welcome. This is Inside Israeli Basketball. Inside Israeli Basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is believing. When your profession takes you to a country like Israel, you're here for a purpose. But the natural beauty and incredible history that surrounds you issues a constant summoning. Jermaine Jackson has made a point of answering that call during his two seasons in Haifa. Some of his most rewarding experiences have occurred in Jerusalem's old city. How you doing? Thank you. How are you? Good. Guess we finally made it, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy that you came. Welcome to Jerusalem. This is Jaffa Gate, one of the seven gates that the old city of Jerusalem has, and actually one of the biggest ones. We're going now into the city. There's four quarters in the city. The Jewish quarter, the Muslim quarter, the Christian quarter, and the Armenian quarter. How are you? How is everything? Okay, good. How are yes, you? Yes, I have seen you on the TV, I think. Take my hospitality, some tea. Bring him some tea with me. <laughs> now nah, I want no tea. Why not? Are you gambling with me right now? No, I'm selling. Yeah. Just gambling with me, either win or lose, right? Okay, Red, I gotta go, man. Don't buy no car. I gotta go, man. I'm the king of the salesman. I know. Jews, Muslims, all Hebrews. Th all together. So what is that there? I see the rag up there. What is that, the, uh, the Last Supper? As you can see, something changed in the air, in the atmosphere. We're all surrounded with churches. We're in the Christian part of the city, the Christian quarter. And you can see that they're selling more Christian souvenirs, uh, pictures of Jesus and look around you. It's yeah. a whole different world in five minutes walk. Guys, this is the place. The place that we're now looking at, this is the holiest place for Christianity, according to most of the Christian world. This is where Jesus was crucified and was buried. The only time in history that Christianity and Islam and Judaism are living in the city in peace, freely, everybody has his own you know, freedom to, to worship whoever he wants to, is in the Israeli time. Okay, let's go inside, guys. see it. I think I have, not having a vantage to challenge anyone, but I think I have more of a insight of when I'm talking to someone is like, you ain't been, you haven't been there. Be still angry. They got pictures, they, they got camels here? Yes. Real camels? Yeah. Not here. The best camel you can get around here. Uh, not so, not so much natural, but. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. Are you okay? Nice to meet you. Nice are to you meet an actor? you. Yeah. So you're on TV. I'm Chris Tucker, man. <laughs> I'm Chris Tucker, man. This is the Roman street, the Caudo. 
okay? Jerusalem is built like a, a layer, a cake with a lot of layers uh -huh. because so many Jerusalems were here. The Muslim Jerusalem, the Christian Jerusalem, the Jewish Jerusalem, etc., etc., the Roman Jerusalem. So this layer belongs to the just the end of the Roman time and the beginning of the Byzantine period. Uh, kind of a lot of history in terms of uh, religion and just the world. Um, kind of it's a pretty special place to think about it of all the stuff that you read about and hear about growing up kind of seeing and walking through it. This is the biggest synagogue. We're now in the in the Jewish quarter, so it's not your Simon quarter. Yeah, it's Simon's yeah. quarter. Yeah. Harder. Come on, Jackie. <laughs> I'm <on the> bus. <laughs> How old are you? 19? And you shooting guns? Yeah. That's illegal where I'm from. You go to jail for a long time. That's the Wailing Wall. Why is the Wailing Wall so important? Why do you see Jews praying all year long, 24-7 in that wall? Basically because this wall is the only thing that remained from the temple. If you were standing here 2,000 years ago, this is what you would see. Is there a meaning behind writing on a, writing a prayer or a hope and putting it in the wall? This is what Jews are doing for many years, but it's not just writing. It's all your prayers, everything that you wanted to say. Uh, we believe since this is the connection point, then it goes up from here directly to heaven. There is a very, very special thing that people do when they come to the Wailing Wall, and that write, write it a prayer, something that you really want. You'll try to find a place just shove it inside and maybe you're going to be answered. I already wrote mine. You know, it starts to make you think a lot. And that's what I really, you know, I'm going to constantly continue to do my homework on the Bible and Jerusalem and Israel and everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. Put it like, I put it to you like that, it's pretty, it's real fun. Coming up, we head to Ashkelon for this year's All-Star Game festivities. I don't think too many people realize that Israel is producing some of the best wines in the world. Israel will be making wine for 5,000 years. In the last 20 years or so, it's turned out to be rather good. In the last 10 years, it's been an absolute wine revolution. Inside Israeli basketball is brought to you by Israel. Seeing is believing. So far this year, Maccabi Haifa has experienced its share of ups and downs. A very talented team lost some extremely close games early on, had to replace Sean Williams, who left for the NBA, and adjusted to a mid-season coaching change. When attempting to turn around your season, it's great to have two league all-stars leading the way. Maccabi Haifa guards Jermaine Jackson and Sylvan Landisberg were selected to the Super League's All-Star Game. Sylvan was named to the Israeli team, while Jermaine made the Foreigners team. Both were honored to vote it on by the fans. I was, I was happy, you know, once I found out, but what I was more overjoyed about it is that the fans voted me in. It really made me know that the fans appreciate me and I appreciate them and I appreciate, you know, like I say, they work hard for their money and they come to watch us play and I give my hat off to them and that's why every time I go on that court I try to play as hard as I can, not for me but for the fans and my family. This year's All-Star festivities took place in Ashkelon where the players attended a Purim parade just before the game. 
It was a tightly contested game, but for the second year in a row, the Israeli All-Star beat the foreigners' team. Jerusalem forward Elishai Kadir won MVP honors as he led the team with a 40 points and 13 rebounds performance. Sylvan Landisberg was the second leading scorer for the Israeli team with 21 points. It was important to be an all-star game, you know, because just to represent the Israelis, uh, which I am. And, um, you know, it was fun just to be out there with those guys and uh, represent and um, have a good game. And, uh, you know, definitely winning felt great. So uh, it was a lot of fun this weekend. Maccabi Haifa is proud to have two all-stars representing the team. The hope now around the locker room is that these talented and experienced team can find a way to turn their season around. When you expect to lose, you will usually lose. And uh, what we got to change mentally is to create within the team the atmosphere that the game is not lost before the final whistle. The thing is, is everybody has to be sold out for each other. Everybody had to buy into the system. We got to keep playing. We got to follow Rami right now. He's our new coach. He has, a, you know, he has his own process and his own plan for what things he wants to happen. The solution is finding a way to play together. We have the leading score. We have a, a, a veteran point guard in, in Jermaine Jackson. We have a tough guy in Carlos Powell. We have a really great scorer in Tyler Wilson who can rebound and block shots like none other. So when we find a way to combine our talents, like the Knicks are doing now, you know, with Jeremy Lin, we can, we can come together and win some games. Well, it was years ago, I was with the Toronto Raptors, and uh, me, Vince Carter, Alvin Williams, Antonio Davis, we lost 12 games in a row. You know, we lost 12 games in a row. And the funny thing about it, Lenny Wilkins came in the locker room and we thought he was going to go crazy. He came in the locker room smiling. And he said, guys, you know what? I've been through this plenty of times. It's OK. We're going to turn it around. But the only way we can turn around is with the guys in this room. In Mexico, uh, my team was third from last before I joined the team. Uh, when I got there, we ended in second place, and we were fighting for first place in the last game with the team, I think, in Cancun. So uh, I've seen the program uh, turned around, and it's a, it's a great thing. It's not that big of a turnaround. It's small things, the little things that we have to follow through on. If we can follow through, I think we can get us a game. And that's all we need is one game to get us rolling. I think the fortunate side of things is everybody goes to the playoffs. So when we go to the playoffs, uh, the slate is 0-0. We all have a chance to, to win the championship. And this situation for the players can be a gift for the rest of their career and even their life if we succeed to turn it around. Up next, a look at the Super League standings. Also, Maccabi Haifa forwards Carlos Powell travels to Nazareth for an experience these children will never forget. March is the time of year when teams in the Super League really start fighting for playoff positions. Let's check in on the leaderboard. The Super League standings have shaken up a bit in the past few weeks. Apollo Holon has made a run in the standings and threatens Galil Gilboa's spot for second place. Former Ohio State Buckeye Ron Lewis leads Holon in scoring. He is one of only four players to average over 20 points in the league. With Moran Roth leading the league in assists and Brian Dunstan, the league leader in rebounds, Holon is a sleeper team to look out for in the playoffs. Maccabi Tel Aviv won all of its last four games and has built a cushion for the top seed in the playoffs. Galil Gilboa has held on to its second place spot with help from the strong play of Romeo Travis. The power forward has scored 20 points or more in his last three games. Natania's Adrian Banks passed Sylvan Landisberg to become the top scorer in the league. 
He now averages 21.7 points a game. He recently dropped a game-high 26 points against Habika. After Maccabi Tel Aviv, playoff seedings could come down to the wire, with only two games left in the regular season. Forward Carlos Powell's basketball career has taken him all over the world, and at each stop he makes a point of immersing himself in the local surroundings. Coach Ofer Rahimi took him on a trip to his hometown of Nazareth to meet children from the city's youth sports club. He got quite a reception. Coach Rahimi brought Carlos along to visit the Mark Tagger Sports Center. Here, a group of future hoopsters eagerly await one of their hard court idols. You are going to meet the kids here. They are very excited to meet you. It's hard work, uh, staying in the gym, working on my game, and listening to my coaches. Why did you start playing basketball? I guess because when I first started playing, uh, I just felt something. It just, it just felt right that I was supposed to play basketball, and then just the game comes from my heart. I love it. Carlos also loves giving back to his fans, which is why he treated the kids to an autograph session. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome. A game of Steal the Rock. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> and finally, free tickets to a Maccabi Haifa game. Make sure you come tomorrow, okay? Make sure. Making Powell's trip to Nazareth personally fulfilling. When we return, Jermaine Jackson continues his sightseeing around Israel, an experience he will never forget. I don't think too many people realize that Israel is producing some of the best wines in the world. Israel will be making wine for 5,000 years. In the last 20 years or so, it's turned out to be rather good. In the last 10 years, it's been an absolute wine revolution. Inside Israeli basketball is brought to by Israel. Seeing is believing. Jermaine Jackson came to Maccabi Haifa last year and immediately brought a steadying veteran presence that helped the team gel as they closed out a tough season. This year, a similar story. Maccabi Haifa placed a call to Jermaine in December with an offer to come back and help guide them through some rough times. They didn't have to ask twice. Jackson, another jumper, and he's been the hot hand early on. Jermaine Jackson has enjoyed playing the game he loves in Israel, making new friends along the way. So when team owner Jeffrey Zen came calling, the chance to rejoin Haifa was a welcomed offer. We always stayed in contact with each other, and uh, you know, just like any business, you try to you know try out new things, and sometimes new things don't work, and. Uh, me and Jeff Rosen, you know, got back on the phone and we talked and we negotiated and um, here I am back here now. I love the people here in Israel and um, some of the teammates from last year are still here this year. We have a great relationship, not just on the court, but off the court. He is uh, hands down one of the best players I've played against or with. I enjoy talking to him before and after practice. And, and picking up and learning things from Jermaine. We as a team adopt the toughness that uh, Jermaine has. I believe that he will help us a lot, you know, to, to create the atmosphere and the attitude that we want to create in the team. 
Jackson pulls up for the J. Got it. You know, we have a new coach, we have a new system, and uh, the system is pretty well for our players, the way we play, and everybody has to buy into the system. Coach have us watching more film, you know, going over more of our uh, mistakes in the film room, and once we get on the court, we go over it also, and you know, we're going over our plays more and more. We're going over more defensive tactics against the other team, so it only takes one win to get back going. You know, actually, it's like we got a monkey on our back, and we're trying to we're trying to shake it off. But the monkey done brung his whole family, and it's getting tougher and tougher. But I think we can shake it off piece by piece. Jackson's veteran presence is one of the reasons why he was asked to return to Haifa, and his teammates have taken full advantage of picking his brain. People call me old man, but I'm very young, I'm 25, so, and Jermaine is 10 years older than I am. Uh, so learning from Jermaine is, is big to me. He's just a great teammate. He knows the game. He's been playing the game for a long time, and, um, you know, he knows people. He knows how to talk to you and get you into the game. He just plays the game the right way, and he plays it with a lot of experience, and, you know, that's what helps. I think he's a true leader. Uh, that uh, has a very positive influence on the team. Always up to explore the country, Jermaine joined fellow teammate Daniel Aydan to visit the caves of Rosh Hashanah, arguably one of the most beautiful sites in Israel. This is one of the best spots in Israel. Here is Lebanon. It's right here, across the board. And... Uh, we're going to go to the Rahbal. You know what's Rahbal? No. It's really nice. So you go down to the caves. Really nice spot. Hey, they, they got caves down there. Caves, caves, man. Make sure don't nothing happen to me, man. Rock there, it doesn't look so strong, but here down in the caves, this is crazy. Come see. You got to watch your step. Come, come. Don't worry. Next time you don't test me the ball, this is the, this is the way it's going, man. Ain't nobody getting up out of there. You fall down there, it's over. You're gonna see about two or three Ninja Turtles come through there. Hey man, do you have stuff like this in Detroit? We don't got nothing like this in Detroit. I mean, we have a beach or um, a couple beaches, but something like this going on in Detroit, we don't have nothing like it. But I'll tell you this, if we did have something like this in Detroit, you see how I say no, do not climb? Oh man, we'll have people up there with barbecue grills, with beer and chips, and some people might try to park some of their cars in the cave, and it, it'll be crazy. But I mean, this is a place, if we had something like this in Detroit, everybody would be here, you know? And then, uh, you know, the negative part about it is that if we had something like this in Detroit with these waves going the way they go, FBI have a hard problem finding bodies, man. I'm a poor inner city kid from the city of Detroit. With me being in professional basketball in the NBA and coming here, I mean, honestly, I still need, I still feel like I don't want nobody to pinch me and wake me up from the dream. You know, I call my pastor and I be like, man, I understand what you're saying, but you need to come here and see this. And I guarantee you, you might be preaching a different way at home. Because once you get here and you see what's really going on, it's like, yeah, what you told me, nah. I thank God and thank Jeff Rosen for having the opportunity to come here. That's all for this edition of Inside Israeli Basketball. Remember, you can follow the Super League all season long on TriangleInternet.tv. So long, everyone.